And welcome to King James Bible University Lectures. I'm Elder Michael Johnson with the Lost Sheep of Israel. And today we, we're actually going to be looking at a topic today on this, on this lecture. Which, if you take the time, and we're going to look at this in a very serious way, to help each and every one of us to come through and understand what the Bible is saying, but to relay it in a more conventional way to where we can get it. So we're going to be looking at the topic of religion of anorexia. This is what we need to look at just a little bit closer to see how we can relate physical things with physical things, spiritual things with spiritual things and the behavior of those. And we can understand the behavior of both. We can better understand what the Bible is saying as well as what the world is saying. Erexia is a behavior that can cause severe, even fatal physical consequences. Physical erexia is, is one that will urge medical consulting that one will seek if they found out that this person had anorexia. So to monitor those consequences, we need to figure out what goes into this category because anorexia itself falls into a category of chosen lifestyle. A chosen lifestyle, not an innocent thing where you see victimization, a habit, a disease, a trauma, or by genetics, you don't see that. Because anorexia often generates from a real physical symptoms as one would even do with overeating or bulimia. And many different life dominating things such as sin, which is the thoughts of destruction. Did you know in anorexia, did you know this, that anorexia are typically people who are confused about perfection in how it looks. Anorexia. Many times you'll see young girls who practice anorexia. It's a habit that they developed and they desire to prove that they are superior, including their perfect. The ability to control that distasteful body impulses that indicates that anyone who has and falls victim to when a person say they need food. Anorexia. Many people sit there and take them to heart and think different things. That people with anorexia feel they're better than the other people in their families. People feel that they can control their overeating. My body doesn't rule me, is what they say. My body don't rule me. So I can control anorexia. I can control this. But they're confused whether the body is inherently good or evil. Whether eating is good or evil. When you look at anorexia, you, it's rather you're looking at a full grown woman, therefore, possibly can be even being attractive to men because she can be highly attractive to men, good or evil. So one explored the view of perfection, success, failure. It always has a switch to which one way or the other. Success also right on the opposite side is failure. Good, bad. 
Good on one side, bad on the other side. Normal, abnormal. Anorexia often limbs out the complete misunderstanding of life. Even anorexia has a biblical world, which we see in religion of anorexia. People even seek counseling for anorexia, aim to create a true understanding on what perfection is. And with that, we look at things and as I said, it's a religion, so we need to join Bible to what this is talking about. And when you look at Matthew chapter five, and we'll see this even in the book, and it tells you in Matthew five forty eight. It tells as plain as they are. It says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as our Father which is in heaven is perfect. So be perfect. Perfect is complete. Perfect is blameless. Perfect is fruitful. And perfect is one that is being in seeking the desires of God. That's part of what we look for when we seeking perfection. Perfection is is not just an illusion in the mind, but it's what we need to understand how to see how perfection actually works. In Luke chapter five, it says this, and we can get a better understanding on what perfection is and how it looks when we try to see it in someone, you can't technically put your finger on it, but it's there. And as it says in Luke chapter one, verse five, it says, and there was the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of a bee. His wife was the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. But they was chasing perfection, which was a God. And it says, and they was both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Wow. So, complete, blameless, faithful is perfect spiritually. So, being perfect is not a medical condition or a problem. It's like a heart of the issue of the problem. Anorexia is now we know with these just with these couple of verses we just looked at, now we know anorexia is an elected behavior against perfection. And one will study the perfectness or sitting there trying to find perfection and they will find that through television. Many people have, when you look at television, you look at it many different ways because what will happen is you can have 10 to 30 different types of teachers with their own personal view of perfection and how it looks. The same as one will indulge in foods. One will indulge in foods. Anorexia. The elected behavior that one will do to follow. To even do certain certain things as you will sit there and see even when you look at it here. Even when you see when you look at it right here. Because anorexia is another elected thing to which one has a behavior which he need to follow. Meaning this. We look at scripture and the scripture always tells us certain certain things that we need to follow. And we understand them and we get very good we can say advice from the creator because he tells us right here. He says, as a dog returned to his vomit, so a fool returned to his folly. So anorexia is a elected behavior. It's 
elected. One can vomit food up and later return back to the same thing again, again, and again. The goal is in the focus on anorexia is not to gain weight and go outside the line of perfection. Them that have perfection and weight. So the same thing we see with the people who also study the Bible with the same effect. One believe their study is teaching and giving them the way of perfection and not sinning against God. But the method of their learning is through 10 to 30 different teachers and everyone have a different view on how you can do service to God using many different types of doctrines and they will consume one behind the other. Anorexia. Because you only can keep one down and you have to remove the other. Which causes you to have a understanding disorder causing you want to indulge in anorexia unknowingly one would say learn this the other one would say throw up that and learn this the other one would say throw up that and take this the other one would say throw out that and eat this anorexia a thought of a mental carnal thing making you believe you're chasing perfection. Your body will basically starve. Learning methods on how you have your study habits. Anorexia is throwing up and returning back again to the same thing, the same table and doing the same thing identically again and again and again and again as a dog returns to his vomit. For example, you have some say in Bible say, some say in Bible say Easter is Easter. Some say Passover is Easter. Wow. Is that true? Because we know that in Malachi chapter three and verse six, it says, for I am the Lord, I change not. We also understand in Psalms 89.34, it says even more. So, as long as we understand these things, we can know that he's not changing anything. But people will sit there and say, no, you take this and throw out that. No, eat this and take that. So, we learning to be anorexic. And as I said in Psalms eighty nine thirty four it says My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. So why are we indulging in something and God said he did not change? Why are we gauging in something that he did not change? The Bible is very upfront about a few things and we can understand them. And when you look at the thing of anorexia, we need to understand where it stems from and where it comes from. In Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and looking at verse 3, the Spirit of God had this pen. He says, Yea, also, when ye that is a fool walketh by the way, his wisdom felleth him because it's carnal, and he saith, everyone that he is a fool. Because many people believe 
there is no God. When believing in televangelism and believing that everything that they say, take this, throw out that, take this one, take that, throw out this, take that, use this, no, don't use that, take this, throw out that, use this. They're giving you a confusing God. Televangelism. And it's a such thing as they're telling you that technically you are a fool. One thing is the content of the message, but understanding is another. So this part is the cause in one to starve physically in seeking God. Seeking these things and you have the sickness will lead you to the truth of perfection of the God of Israel is a fallacy what it becomes. Because they're going to sit there and say, if you want to see this God that I want to show you this God and you want to see this God, if you got to see this God, then you need to do something for us to where we can get you to this God, because I can only get you to the God close enough to the God. I need you to do something for me. And the reason of anorexia, the reason of anorexia is to gain spiritual weight when we look biblically and it's to where we need to properly live. So what they say is if you want to see the God that I'm telling you about, I'm televising about, I'm doing these things. So I need the television of these services in these churches and all these things I'm doing. I need your weekly support because we're hungry. But you chasing perfection and I have it. Understanding what God word is, given something that has nothing to do with anything. And you can see this and we can tell the difference between these. It's simple. It's not complex. Because when you're Understanding when you made an agreement with the creator, he cannot let you starve or can't have you running around with different doctrines. It brings us to the, a view to look at, to understand, to sit there to where we can think about within our heads and get a better understanding of what he wants us to see spiritually, but he have to show us carnally to understand it. Meaning this has happened where he shows you the carnal side to where we can get it spiritually to understand it spiritually to apply it to our lives and where we can be spiritually filled. For a kingdom of heaven is like unto a man is a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers unto his vineyard. Understanding that the householder, we have to sit there and look at it physically and think what it is. And when we sit there and think about it, it's telling you the kingdom of heaven. So if it's the kingdom of heaven, it's telling you about who's in heaven. So if this is a householder, who's is it talking about? It's interesting. That become interesting. But he hired laborers to go into his field. And here's your more particular one, which we really need to get and personally understand. Because it says, and when he had agreed with the laborers, so he had agreed with these men, physical on what we look at. For a penny a day. And sent them into his vineyard. So on this agreement, the householder and the laborers now have an agreement. So there's no reason, no possibility, no thankfulness to where 
anyone should sit there when a servant or a laborer of God come in and he's going to give you anything. Now the point is he hired him and the agreement is made. The agreement is made, but many of them will look certain ways and try to look like they're hungry. What a lot of people do. But to prove the point on the whole analogy on what he did, on what he did and for him to what we need to think about together in Jeremiah chapter three, picking it up at verse 15, he says this, and that's why he made that agreement with those laborers. Cause he says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. However, he's providing and he's giving you pastors according to his heart. So he's giving these labors and he's giving them instructions, which is knowledge and understanding to feed his people. And that's his vineyard. And he made the agreement with them and he hired them and he hired them for a penny a day. He made the deal in. What are we doing? It's interesting because the Bible also says this. And when we look at, we can go to Haggai chapter Two and look at verse eight, and it says, "For the silver is mine, the gold is mine," said the Lord of hosts. We know this. All this belongs to him, so there's no reason for anyone to look hungry to sit there and beg for food and then regurgitate it up. These are things we have to look at that's really thinking and what we need to do. Because when he sat there, he the gold is his, the silver is his. <clears throat> we know that. But we know particular things that he also put in place and made sure that this could not be misconstrued in any way. How do we know? Because the Bible says so, and we got to hold this as our authority for all things. And we know this is true here. In Luke chapter 10, picking it up at verse 35, he says this, and on the morrow, he, when he departed, he took two pence, one penny, and gave them to the host and said unto him, take care of him and whatsoever thou spendeth more. So don't take it from them. But if you spend more, don't take it from them. When I come again, I will repay you. I'm going to repay you. But don't take anything from them because there's no reason to because we agreed upon this penny. So many go back to and we need to go back and always look at the first statement. What was already made from the beginning of time and what was from the beginning on what the first statement I made is. Or anorexia. It falls into a category of a chosen lifestyle as paying tribute to a man. This is not an innocent thing or a victimization by having disease, trauma, or genetics. This is a chosen lifestyle. But the true sense of it is one who believed that they going in the way of perfection. Pure delusion created by man robbing the flock of God, seeking money from God's people. When the agreement is with God for a penny, including with God, and the deal was not made with man. So this is why we have the problem. We keep taking in food and regurgitating it, taking in food and regurgitating it, and we truly believe that we've been healthy people. 
So the problem becomes a few is issues because people will now, as they sit there and they talk about these things, they become and they have issues with the people that hired them. They have issues because he was not now any longer looking for the penny. He's now looking for more payment on what he feel he was worth. And he feel he was worth more than a penny. The Bible speaks of this and we need to look at this in a closer part of this. And we got to make sure that we get the understanding from what he's trying to convey to us physical to the spiritual side. In Matthew chapter 20, we need, we need 20 and we're going to go to verse 13 and we're going to see something to where this is the issue with us because it's saying this, it says, but when answered, one of them said, friend, I do thee no wrong. Do it. Thou do it. Not thou agree with me for a penny. So why are you upset? Why are you having a problem? The Bible also tells us in first Peter chapter, chapter five, verse two, it says, feed the flock of God, which is among you taking oversight there not by constraint, but willingly not for filthy lucre because anything other than what he paying for anything other than that. And you taking it from anyone else, it becomes filthy lucre because he agreed to pay it and not for anyone else. Interesting. So if anyone else pays you for delivering the word, then you are taking filthy lucre. Makes you a whole different person. This is the issue and why people do these things. In verse 14, verse 14, it says this, it says, take thy, take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. So why we have the issue? Where's the issue? Many people call themselves servants or laborers of God which has driven people into distractions, into starvation, using any other thing that they can and making sure that what is true is false and what is false is true. Anorexia is a chosen lifestyle. And we have to take the time to practice that lifestyle when you chosen anorexia. It's intentional. The voluntary thing is self-starvation. The very thing, the very thing of self-starvation. Bondage is a matter of choice. Bondage is a matter of choice that he seeks no assistance or help. Anorexia is a learned eating habit. It enters into and under your own will, seeking the folly and perfection from the views of a man has nothing to do with the views of Christ. These are things, these are follies, but they sit there and they'll tell you these are things that which is perfection, a behavior that's connected to another behavior. And the example is just the subject of anorexia is the frequently developed, which deceives others, making you think that you are eating healthy and you're not. So it comes from one would be a church or even goes to every day and they study in the Bible and they use televisionism methods they use the words such as praise God bless you blessed and highly favored thank you Jesus hallelujah and people hear these certain nibbits of food particles comes out of their mouth and they believe that they have a healthy spiritual lifestyle but in the real world, they really are sick because when they look in the mirror, they either going to look overweight or they're going to think that they have a self appearance of perfection and appear thin, sick, lame and 
unhealthy. Ask any details on what they have eaten in the Bible and they cannot tell you. A true Bible studier will see the deception of televangelism, the category that offers that choice lifestyle. And they use that, and they love to be in their suits, their music, their singing, their fame, their lying wonders. Everything is mixed up like in a gumbo pot. Using only catchphrases to get you to eat. And then later, throw it up. To prepare you for the next one. Anorexia is a learned behavior. It's no surprise. It's even with the person and the mother, the sister, the classmate, the college person, the roommate. Many may struggle with these times and the same thing, which is a, a self-indulgent behavior into anorexia, which is a chosen lifestyle. So remember one thing and, the, and one thing only. See, where there is one householder, one, one. And we can see that here when we look at in Sirach, we can go there and look at this and go into Sirach and we'll pull this here. Uh, we're going to Sirach chapter 37. And pick it up at verse 20. And it says, There is one that showeth wisdom in words. There's only one. Only one showeth wisdom in words. That is God. The only one that shows wisdom in words. That is God. And is hated. He's hated and shall be destitute of all food. And this is what's going to happen because when you look at that flip side of that, we have chosen anorexia. We have chosen a lifestyle which is not good. If you have intense fear of gaining weight, many of us have a lifestyle of anorexia, using to speak in that perfection which is in the own eyes of that beholder. But anorexia is a physical, spiritual opportunity. Because the eyes of that own one and perfection is in the eyes of that one beholder. So I say this. On your thoughts. To where you can always remember and keep it in mind. As you think on these things on anorexia. And you look at Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 8. And the spirit of God, he penned this and he made sure this was clear. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the spirit of God. So anorexia is an expression of lust, control, and one desire of their own way of perfection, which is a manipulation and an expression of their own reality and their own desires and pleasures of life and circumstances, which is perfection within themselves, being ruled by ungodly fears. Hmm. Worshiping the body is one thing. Seeking perfection and disbelief in the flesh is another. Slavery is a breed of despair. And it starts out where you can obtain sympathy through perfection. Is that true? This one must think. One looks to be a supermodel, the other looks to be a godly person using such methods as control as they were taken in that manner. So when you come to the table, you sit and you want to eat your fill, you remember this on your way out. Never forget what he said. 
Never forget what Christ said. Never forget what he had his men of God pen. And we're going to look at this. And he tells you this in Psalms 23 and verse 5. It says, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies and anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. So when I say anorexia, is that a thing to where if it runs over, are you going to throw it up or what you going to do? Because that's the lifestyle that you choose. This is something that many of us have chosen. So is he your enemy? Is this the lifestyle that you chosen? I say this, the most I got prepared a meal before you to not bump you up, but where you become fat in knowledge that your cup can run it over, but anorexia is a lifestyle. So is anorexia in your lifestyle, is it a lifestyle or is it a solution? If it's a lifestyle, then what are the benefits? If it's a solution, what is the change? So with that, I hope that you think on this and you understand here what this is all about. So until next time, I say to each and every one of you guys, so until next time, I say shalom.